this is a difficult question, Musav. When I was, the last time I was in Israel, when I was in the Magena David Adom headquarters, we had a presentation of some of the stuff that was found on the backpacks of the Hamas terrorists who infiltrated Israel. And, you know, they had the maps, they had the instructions, they had condoms. So they were prepared for sexual violence. This is not something that randomly happened. And I want to know, I mean, you that live in their world, I understand, and I, no, I can't understand, I mean, they get into Israel, they murder us. Why did they have to rape women? Why did they have to act with that sexual violence? Where does that come from in the ideology of Islam? In Islam, it's actually justified to take women as booty. So in a war, and that's seventh century mentality, this is what supposedly Muhammad practiced, even though I doubt it, but according the Islamic, most Islamic trusted resources, he demonstrated that uh, by taking, for example, Safiya, which was the wife of uh, the Jewish uh, leader of Khaybar. And he slept with her the same uh, day he killed her husband. This is according to the, uh, one of the most trusted Islamic resources. Okay, so to Muhammad that was a booty. Uh, the Muslims say he honored her by taking her as a wife. So they will always justify uh, the sexual violence. But throughout the Islamic history, what they did in Europe, what they did to, to Persia, what they did in India, they are invaders. And by the way, there is no difference between Palestine and Islam or the Palestinian state and Islamic state because they depend, both concepts depend on the destruction of all other civilizations. Palestine depends on the destruction of Israel as a condition for existence. And the Islamic state depends on the destruction of other civilizations in order to create the Islamic civilization. They cannot create of their own. They can invade and they take all the intellectual property, women, enslave humanity, and behead men. This is what they did according to their own history. So we cannot ignore this, uh, this reality. Now, rape was not only committed by Hamas. Rape was committed mostly by Gaza civilians. By the civilians. Those are the ones, by the way, back in the day when Israel, during the Oslo uh, period, Israel allowed the Palestinian Authority to bring Gazans into the West Bank. And within weeks of the arrival of the Gaza people to Ramallah, it's my hometown where I was born, in the West Bank, near Jerusalem. The stories of rape were all over the place. And this is when the people of Ramallah said, we don't want Gazans coming to our city at all, because it's, it's a Christian town, by the way. So it's a rape culture, especially rape against uh, minors, male. Then the punishment to the rapist and the rape victim are the same. Kill them both to bury the shame. It's why you will find a father who kills his own daughter or a brother who would kill his sister because of shame. Or she's a, a rape victim. It's better for them to just kill the woman to hide the shame. We are talking about, and we wonder, you know, where is the sexual violence coming? Then they want women to be one thing. They want them all to dress in black and burqas, repress them, kill their potential. Then when, they, when the society is, is black and white, that does not have diversity in it, all the creative force, all the divine intelligence is absent from that society, they complain. Then when they look at their neighboring country and they see the diversity, even though it could be wild, 
when you go to Tel Aviv, but at least people have the freedom. And that's the way of evolution. That's the way of the universal design. This is the way of God. And everybody is responsible for the choices that they make. You cannot just repress half of the society, then target minors and abuse children sexually and also by indoctrinating then expect that there is not going to be sexual violence coming out of that society. Does not even qualify as a society. Then come and say, Palestine, Palestine, as an escape. Well, how can Palestine actually solve your problem? Your very foundation is rotten. And the world is really believing them. If we give them power, this type of people cannot be trusted with their own children. They are willing to sacrifice their children religiously. How can I trust them with territory? How can I trust them with the government? How can I trust them with any power? These people are not trustworthy. They haven't proved, at least to me, that they love their children more than they hate their enemy. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like share and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.